Hey everybody, what's happening? Son of a Silver Stacker here. In today's numismatic news and information for the 27th day of September 2022, I'd like to welcome you over to Atmex so we can check out those live spot prices. However, before that, I'd like to welcome you over to Good Morning to You with Tiny Numismatics, number 243. Whoops, I didn't make Tiny's names all caps. So that's going to start this morning at 9.30 a.m. Eastern Time and 6.30 a.m. Pacific. I know that's early for you uh, birds on the West Coast, but it's well worth it. So tell a friend. Now, here we are at Atmex. Gold is up $10.10 10 to 1646.30. Silver up 16 cents to 18.94. Platinum also up $6.30 to 8.76.40. But palladium is down $3 even to 20.82 even, Stephen. Now, let's head over here. There's Forbes.com. And this is under Forbes Advisor Investing. And it says here, silver price today. And it was written by editor Benjamin Curry. And it was fact-checked by Mike Cetera. Thank goodness for those fact-checkers. Where would we be without them? Now, let's see here. It says here, how to invest in silver. And let me know uh, in the comments below what you think this article's tone is. Whether you think it is pro-silver. Uh, whether you think it is uh, con-silver, like negative against silver. Or is, if it is a balanced article. So let's go ahead and start going on with this. Silver has long been considered a reliable asset to help diversify your investment portfolio. Some investors choose silver to hedge their other holdings, while others see it as a store of value that helps in uncertain times. And it could be a little bit of both. I imagine some people could see it being both um, bonuses there. Now, here are the most common ways to invest in silver, from owning bullion to purchasing the shares of companies involved in the production of silver. Okay, that's reasonable. And there's, what, five bullet points here that we're going to cover? Silver bullion, the first one. You can buy investment-grade silver bars of three nines fine purity in weights ranging from one ounce. And really, you know, you can even find them even lower weights uh, called fractional uh, quarter ounce, half ounce, and so on and so forth. Let me go ahead and finish this. Now, ranging from one ounce to 100 ounces, uh, and I imagine you could probably buy 1,000 ounce bars too, but that's, you know, that's okay if they, you know, I don't know why they're narrowing the picture, but, you know, they've done that, and I just want to broaden that a little bit for you. No reason to narrow the scope. Lower weight bars may easier to sell in a challenging market than larger bars. Absolutely. I totally agree with that. Silver coins. There are a variety of silver coins available for purchase on the market, including both new issue coins and collectible coins. And if you follow this hyperlink here, it talks to you how to um, collect collectibles or how to invest in collectibles. Um, you know, music instruments, um, China, fine china, and so on and so forth. Uh, coins, yeah. Popular choices include the American Silver Eagle, the official silver bullion coin of the United States, and the Canadian Silver Maple Leaf, which is Canada's official silver bullion coin. Both weigh in one ounce and are guaranteed to be, guaranteed to be three nines pure silver. Now, I'm not sure why uh, silver bullion uh, and silver coins aren't in the same one, but that's okay, um, even though we do consider those American Silver Eagles to be bullion, okay? So there's... Obviously, more than one type of bullion is what they're trying to say here. Silver futures contracts. Futures are derivative contracts where a buyer agrees to purchase a set of quantity of silver at a predetermined price on a future date. Silver futures let sophisticated investors speculate on prices and hedge their wider portfolios, providing exposure without the hassle of handing physical metal. Uh, futures contracts can be easily sold prior to expiration. I'll tell you, there's some really salty words in here. Um, but that's just me. Uh, what do I know? Um, you know, it's just words, right? <laughs> silver stocks. Owning the shares of publicly traded silver mining companies is an easy way to get silver exposure without holding physical metal. Just be warned that the prices of silver stocks may be only loosely correlated with the price of silver. Isn't that the truth? Now, here we go. Silver ETF. And what an ETF is, it's an exchange traded fund. And I believe they're not that old as far as like the popularity. Maybe in the last uh, 15 years, they've become very popular. There are more than a few uh, thematic exchange traded funds focused on silver. Typically, they invest in a diversified basket of silver assets, including stocks, physical bullion, and or futures contracts. There you go. Now, here is the difference between silver and gold. Silver and gold are among the most popular alternative investments on the market, drawing more investor interest and trading liquidity, liquidity than any other precious metals. Absolutely. So there's the top two right there. Now, here's how you should understand their key differences, right? Now, one is utility. Number two is relationship to markets. And number three is price volatility. Now, utility says precious metals like gold and silver have low commercial utility beyond their use as stores of value, okay? Um, 
I'll, I'll read it because I, I know what it means, but let me let me just finish because I'll probably ruin it. They have relatively few industrial uses. There you go. How is it used? That said, compared to gold and silver, has many more industrial and commercial uses. Around half the silver traded in the markets is used commercially in applications ranging from dentistry to electronics. And obviously, you know, if we're going to be switching over to a green economy, silver is used in the production of the solar panels. And I believe that they're even... Uh, um, they've invented double-sided polar solar panels. Uh, did I almost say polar sandals? Maybe. <laughs> now, here we go. Relationships to markets. The price of silver tends to track the performance of the overall stock market and the economy. During economic expansions, all right, silver prices tend to rise along with the gross domestic product, that's GDP, and markets. While during recessions, silver prices generally fall as the economy slows. Do you hear that? So some people think that we are not in a recession. Some people think that we're going to be soon. Some people think that we're in a recession already. Some people think that we're going to be in a depression soon. So, um, you know, and what does that say about silver prices? Okay, so while during recession, silver prices generally, I think that's an interesting word, generally fall as the economy slows, gold prices tend to move in the opposite way, rising when the economy isn't tough and declining during boom times. Price volatility. I think this is something we're all very sensitive to unit prices of silver are a fraction of gold prices today's silver price is 19 dollars per ounce while gold is 1642 per ounce and that is the gold ratio right there so lower price financial assets tend to move uh, tend to be uh, more volatile and then higher priced assets and since silver is almost always much cheaper than gold prices move up and down more frequently by greater magnitudes exposing you to greater potential gains and losses and that is for silver and gold they're talking about because if you remember if you look at palladium well we've seen that one on a seesaw ride here for the last six seven eight months haven't we it's, it can go down um 300 400 in a day and then back up three four hundred dollars the next day i mean it's just on a wild roller coaster ride now it says here should you invest in silver Silver. Now, if you'd like to further diversify your portfolio, silver can be a good investment as part of a larger basket of commodities. A good rule of thumb is to allocate no more than 5% of your investment to commodities, although that amount could be higher or lower based on your own personal goals and time horizon, like the am amount of time you have available in, in your life, right? If you're a young person or an older person, okay? Um, now, it makes sense to invest in silver under certain market conditions. Uh, when supply and demand are out of balance, it is the right time to invest in silver. Now, is supply and demand an issue right now? Is it out of balance right now? And does that mean it is the time to invest in silver? When prices are low and you'll find a silver uh, company that has proven its ability to exploit the situation, that's when you want to buy. Let's read that again. When prices are low. Now, what does that mean when prices are low? How do you know it's low? And at what point? What price point is low? Well, I think that's up to you to decide, right? And you find a silver company that has proven its ability to exploit the situation. That's when you want to buy. Now, this I thought was really interesting. It's silver and inflation hedge. Well, like I said, you know, this is a really interesting article. And we'll see what they're, uh, if they have a bias or if they're objective or subjective. We'll find out. When inflation heats up, some investors believe that precious metals like silver provide a good hedge against price rises. In fact, silver is only an effective inflation hedge over an extremely long periods of time measured in decades or centuries. What? Yeah, that's what they just said. During the oil price shock of 1973 to 1979, now they're picking these windows, remember that. Average annual inflation in the United States was around 8.8% over the same period. Silver averaged an 80% annual gain. And are we around 8%? inflation? Yeah, maybe. Thanks in part to Herbert and Nelson Hunt's attempt to corner the market in 1979. That's the Hunt brothers. And if you don't know about that story, well, there's a great article right there. If you leave out the usual or the unusual situation involving the Hunt brothers, silver averaged an uh, a 22% gain from 1973 to 1978, more than double the average rate of inflation. Now, here we go. Silver has not been an effective inflation hedge since the 1970s. From 80 to 84, annual inflation averaged about 6.5%, but silver prices fell nearly 23%. There was an average annual inflation of around 4.6% from 1998 to 1991, but average annual silver prices fell 12.7%. Since April 2021, the monthly U.S. Consumer Price Index reading has averaged an annual gain of nearly 7%, but the price of silver is down 25%. Folks, what I'd like to tell you or ask you is why don't they talk about the manipulation in this market and some of the characters and 
uh, actors and portrayers that have been busted in silver manipulation. And that needs to be um, considered when we look at why, you know, silver is down since, you know, this period of time, right? Why can't we have a historical perspective and look at, because look, we looked at the manipulation of the Hunt brothers back in 1979. Why not look at the manipulation, okay, that's happened here more recently? Yeah, not sure why. Um, I would, uh, I'm not saying they're protecting anybody, but it's just interesting how they hadn't mentioned that at all, isn't it? Now, over extremely long periods of time, measured in decades, silver has proven to be an effective hedge against inflation. Would you really want to buy silver if only extremely long periods of time that it helps you? Yeah, I don't know. It doesn't sound that appealing, does it? Now, it says here, silver may not be the best way to protect your portfolio from price rises. Yeah. <laughs> Is there a slant here? Is there, what do you think they're saying? Um, and do you agree with what they're saying here? Now, the silver price data above was provided by Xyla Labs, which sources asset data, uh, price data from a wide range of sources. The silver price represents an average of spot silver prices on several leading metals exchanges. Prices are un updated once every business day. There it is, folks. So there's the article. It's by Forbes.com. It's under the advisor on investing. Um, what do you think? Are they um, are they on it, or are they? I mean, it's been fact checked, so you know they did their homework. Yeah, I don't know. I want to show you this before I bone out of here today. This is whatnot, and it's a really interesting site. Um, uh, say, hey kid, turn me on to this, and I wanted to show it to you. This is coins and money, and it's kind of like YouTube where they have like auctions and things and people watching it, but you don't have to subscribe to a channel. The channels just pop up that are under a coins and money um, uh, um, tab, I guess I want to say tab, coins and money, I can't even think. So here we go, action figures, Marvel figures, TMT, I'll do Star Wars figures. So look, if you just want to just follow Star Wars figures, there you go, um, and you can find these. Okay, so, but if you just want to follow coins and money, you just follow this. You don't even have to follow their their channel, and it just comes up. It's kind of cool, actually, now to the plus ones. This is awesome, and um, it says, come let us sing for joy to the Lord, Psalm 95.1. And um, if you know Psalm 95.1, it talks about being totally stoked out for the Lord, singing joy and praise, and um, everything we do um, to praise him, okay, because you know, remember uh, when Moses was in Malerba and they had to get the rocks and the water out of the rocks? I mean, that seems like an insanity, but it happens. But for questioning and not being totally down and, you know, and quarreling and, you know, how could you come out of Egypt and still not be like, yeah, this is amazing. We are living in a miraculous time. I don't know. But there it is. It's a reminder to everybody that, you know what, sing praise for the Lord. And just continue and don't question just be totally stoked out i know that might sound a little difficult to understand but it in the end it will absolutely now here we go this is um a <laughs> really funny joke what do you call hippie's wife mississippi that's what you call them now this is 95.9 koin coin news radio this is led zeppelin thank you yeah that's good stuff and the lyrics are on the screen. So there it is, folks. I want to thank you all for watching. Thanks for dropping by. Don't forget to hit that like button. And if you do like what you hear and see, please subscribe to the channel. It's free. And not only that, check out the membership because that really helps us out. Uh, yes. And I will see you later on this morning. And a good morning to you with Tiny Numismatics. Son of a Silver Stacker. Out.